Hi, and welcome back to Programming with PAX. In today's video, we are going to explore CSS animations. We'll start by looking at transitions and animations and compare the two. And then after that, we're going to go through all of the properties that are available for each. Finally, we will briefly talk about performance. Let's get started. All right, so as a quick note, if you are new here, my name is Paxton, and I love breaking down complex web development topics and teaching it in a really approachable way. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. With that out of the way, animations allow you to change from one style to another style over time, where there is a starting point and an ending point. Now, there are two different ways of animating. The first is using the transition property, and the other is using the animation property. A transition can only change between two states, where an animation can have many states. So rather than just specifying a starting point and an ending point, with animations, you can be more granular and you can say, well, at halfway or 25% way through, I want to apply this styling instead. Let's first look at transitions. So in this index.html, I simply have a div with a class called object. And in the styles, I'm giving it a color and a height and a width. And then when I hover over it, I'm changing it to brown. So right now you can see, as soon as I hover over the square, it instantly changes to brown. I'm going to close the sidebar just to have a little less noise, and let's get into it. So to use a transition, we first need to select a property that we're wanting to change. So transition property. And for here, let's change the background color. So background color, perfect. Next, we're gonna have to specify the duration so transition du duration, and let's say one second. And we could say one S or we could say 1000 MS. I like to keep things in seconds, so let's do one second. Cool, now let's save. And when I hover over now, you can see that it's not instantaneous. It doesn't change from blue to brown straight away. It sort of fades in, and that's the transition in action. The next property I'd like to show you is the transition timing function. What this allows you to do is control the acceleration of the animation or transition. There are a couple predefined ones, such as ease in, ease out, and ease in out. And generally, when you hear the word ease, think slow. So if we go with ease in, it's going to be slow at the in or at the start, where ease out would be slow at the out or the end of it, but faster everywhere else. So the best way to understand this is with some visualization. So if I right click on the square and go to inspect, we are now in the elements tab. And on the right hand side with the square selected, you can see the styling that is being applied to it. And here we have transition timing function and it says ease out because obviously that's what we have currently. But there's this little symbol next to it. And if we click on that, we have a little visualization that shows what the animation looks like over time. So we have these circles that are fairly spread out at the start. And then the more towards the end of the animation we get, these circles become more frequent. And that's to represent that it's going slower. So if we click on this, you can see it goes faster and then towards the end, slower, 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 right at the end here. So that is ease out. Now let's look at ease in. Oh, not that one. <laughs> not that one. You can go through them. Here you go. So ease in. Now it's the opposite. So if we click on this, you can see that there's a bunch of circles right at the beginning where there's lots of overlap, meaning it's slower. And then towards the end, you can even see the circle itself sort of shoot away, there's an acceleration to it. So this is ease in, so slow at the start, and then faster for the rest of it. And then there is ease in out. And with this, you can see that there's a bunch of circles at the beginning and at the end, and then in the middle, there's not much overlap with the circles, meaning it's faster. So ease in out, so slow at the start and at the end is what it's saying. 
Now, if I didn't want any acceleration at all, I could go with linear. And then you may be able to see there's this light gray line that goes straight up. And so that would be linear right there. So there's no acceleration, but that kind of looks a little unnatural. So usually we'll go with one of these presets. However, if you don't want to use one of these presets and you want to have something custom, what you can do is click on the purple circles here and drag, and you can create your own curve. It's called a Bezier curve. So if I go here and release, now you can see the rough shape of what's going to happen. So it starts off a little bit slow, and then right here in the middle, it's quite fast, and then towards the end, it slows down again. And we can even do things like bouncing. So if I bring the top circle up quite high, you can see that the bounce, you can see that the circle goes past the end and then comes back. I'll click it again, you can see. Zoop. So this is the power of the cubic bezier. And if we want this styling, we can simply copy it. And in our timing function, we simply paste it in. And if I save, now when I hover over, this is the acceleration that it gets. Beautiful. All right, so one more property that I wanna show you is the transition delay. So let's say two seconds here. And when I save, so if I hover on the square, it's now gonna take two seconds before it starts changing to brown. And when I hover off, it's going to take two seconds before it reverts back to blue. So this is how we can create a transition. However, there is a shorthand syntax as well. And that is with the transition keyword. Now in here, I can say the property that I want to transition. So let's say background color, and then the duration. So one second, Let's say ease in out, and we can add a delay here as well. So let's say two seconds. And I'm going to comment all of this out. Let's save. And now everything should be working just like before. So when I hover over, two second delay, and then it changes to brown. And if I stop hovering, then two seconds, and it turns back to blue. Now, something to note is that the order doesn't really matter except the times here. So we can see that we have a one second and a two second. I could move the two second delay to be before the timing function. And if I save now, everything should still work the same. So now it'll change to brown. And when I hover off, it changes black to blue. Perfect. The only thing you need to know is that the first number that you put in is gonna be the duration. And then the second number you put in, wherever it is, is going to be the delay. Cool, so I'm gonna remove the delay here because that's kind of annoying to work with. Let's save and perfect, everything works. Now in the hover, let's put a border radius of 50%. When I hover over now, you can see that the square instantly changes to a circle. However, the color still has a transition on it. And that's because we are obviously selecting the background color property. Now, obviously I can put the border radius here instead and save. And when I hover over, now you can see that the, the color instantly changes and the border radius is being animated from a square to a circle. What would happen if I wanted to do both at the same time? Then you would want to use the all keyword here. So if I save now and hover over, now you can see that both the background color and the border radius are being applied to this transition. Now, an important note is that we put this transition on the object itself and not on the hover. And if we did that, and let's save, what you're gonna see is that as soon as I hover over, this transition is going to be applied. And when I remove the mouse, it instantly changes back to a blue square. And this is because the transition here is being applied only when the object is being hovered over. But as soon as it's not being hovered, then this transition doesn't get applied anymore. So if we want it at all times, then we put it on the element itself. Let's save, and we're back in business. Beautiful. So now let's look at animations. So just like with transition, we can first add an animation name. No, <laughs> animation name. There you go. <laughs> Just a whole bunch of key presses, and I'm hoping that autocomplete gives me what I want. So in the animation name, we can give it whatever name we want. So let's call it some name. We can then give an animation duration. 
and let's call it two seconds. And also there is a timing function, the acceleration part of it. So animation timing function. And let's say ease in out, perfect. And let's save. And you can see that nothing happens. And that's because with animations, you need to create a keyframe. So we first write an at symbol and then keyframes. And then we put the name that we gave in the animation name. So some name, so some name. And we open up the brackets, perfect. So this name here, it could be whatever, as long as it matches the animation name itself. Within the keyframes is where you're going to describe what the animation will do throughout time. So in that first slide that I showed you, the transition only goes from the start to the finish. However, with animations, you can be more granular. And so you can say, well, at 25%, I want it to do whatever. And at 50%, I want it to do something else. And at 100%, I want it to be whatever. And you do all that with keyframes. So in its most basic form, I can write 100%, meaning at the end of the animation, I can add some styling here. So let's say transform, translate X by 100%. And so what this is saying is at the end of the animation, I want you to move the object on the X axis by 100% of its width. And let's save. And now you can see it is moving. Cool, so let's keep exploring. So animation delay, let's say three seconds. Perfect, save. Now you can see one, two, three, perfect. And it goes back. Cool, so animation delay exists, just like with transitions. I'm going to comment it out because it's annoying. And up next, we have the animation fill mode. So we have forwards and backwards here. The fill mode property allows you to set what styles will be applied at the end of the animation. So if I put forwards here, what it's saying is to keep the styling of the 100% or the end of the keyframe. So let's save and see what that looks like. So as you can see, once the animation finishes, it no longer reverts back to where it normally was it will keep the styling that was specified at the end of the keyframe. Now, if I have backwards here and save, then it reverts back to where it would be at at the 0% here. And just so you know, the 0%, if you don't specify anything, then it's just going to take the styling that the element originally had. And one more thing to keep in mind is that sometimes you'll see from here and to here. And if I save, everything works the same. Personally, I like to always use percentages because it just allows you to be more granular. To and from are only starting and ending points. So either way, you'd have to add 25% or something here anyway. So let's revert back to percentages. Cool, so that is the fill mode. Up next, we have the animation iteration count. And let's set that to two. Now this controls the number of times the animation plays before stopping. So you can put either a specific number or the word infinite. So you can see one and two, and then it stops. And if I write infinite, now you can see it will just do it over and over and over. Cool. Next, there is the animation direction. So in this, we can say alternate. And if I save, now you can see that it goes back and forth. It alternates the direction. There's also alternate reverse so that it would start at its end point and then go to where it's originally meant to start and continue. We have reverse. So it's just gonna start at the end point and only go to the beginning, but there's no actual alternating where it's going back and forth. And finally, there's the animation play state. So this controls the state of the animation. By default, it is set to running. But if for some reason you wanted to pause the animation on hover or something, then this is how you would do it. You'd add pause there. And if I save, you can see it's paused straight in its track. Very cool. So 
just like with transition, we have, of course, an animation shorthand. So let's give it a name, so some name. Let's give it a duration, so two seconds, infinite, and let's say alternate. Now I'm going to comment out everything else and save. And you can see that everything is working as it should. From what we've seen so far with animations, they're pretty similar with transition because really we only have a starting point and an ending point. But animations are much more powerful than that. So let's say at 33%, we want the transform to translate Y 100%. And if I save now, you can see <laughs> it's getting some, some funky business going on. Then at 66%, and within there, let's say transform, and let's give it a translate of 200%, 200%. So with the other translates, we've been using translate Y and translate X for the X and Y axis. But if I say just translate, then this is going to be the X axis and this is gonna be the Y axis. So it's just, again, another shorthand. And if I save, <laughs> now you can see it's, it's doing some really crazy things. And of course, we can have more than one property in here. So let's say a background color of red. Perfect. And in here, let's do a background color of green. And finally, let's do a background color of yellow. Sure. Let's save. And now you can see the box is jumping around, freaking out, and changing colors. All right, I'm going to pause this because I'm sure at this point you are seizuring. In summary, with animations, you give it a name and a duration, and then using keyframes, you specify the name of the animation that you're wanting to control, and then using percentages, you can apply styling at certain points throughout the animation, and it will intelligently figure out, okay, 33% into this two-second duration animation, I'm going to apply this. And then at 66%, I'm going to apply this, etc. And then of course you have all these other properties like the iteration count. So if you want it to go infinitely, the direction, uh, the fill mode. So what styling do you want at the end of the animation? Finally, I also just want to talk a little bit about animation performance. So when you're animating, you really want to be using this transform property as often as possible. And the reason for that is because it gives you access to translate, it gives you access to scale, and it gives you access to rotate. And between all of those, you can move an element around the page, you can increase its size and decrease its size, and also you can rotate it. So that really covers a lot of what you need to do. You should be using the transform property over things like margin or padding, or width and height if you're wanting to scale it, because it's more performant in the browser. So when the browser goes through and renders it, it's able to be much more efficient if you're using translate, scale, and rotation. Also, opacity is also highly optimized, and that's how you'd make an element fade in and out. All right, so that is it for CSS animations. Hopefully now you can see just how powerful they can be, and you can start to incorporate them into your own projects. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments section down below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you did find this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you dropped a like and subscribe for more content just like this. On that note, thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you in the next one.